We present modeling with rendering primitives, an interactive, non-photorealistic canvas. Let us try to paint a brush stroke with a regular painting program. Oh yes, that's nice. Now I want to select the stroke to be able to move it, scale it, rotate it, and change its color. Hey, that doesn't work. Wait, I have an idea. Let's try a vector program. Oh nice, here, I can select it, move it, scale it, rotate it, even change its color. But hey, my stroke has no texture anymore. This isn't what I want either. Let's see if I can fix that. What do we need? Well, first we need strokes. Lots of strokes. Even more strokes. Fine. But I want them bigger, so scale them up. Yes, that's much nicer. Now they are large enough to fill the canvas. But there are still some white spots. Let's add a few more strokes there. Hey, that's cool. They're big right away. Let's punch a hole in the middle. Cool. Now I can just push them away. Hmm, only green is boring. Wow, I can just paint over the strokes to colorize them. Nice color mixing, too. I don't have to deal with RGB colors. Hmm, something is missing. Right, the leaves look random. Let's turn them all in one direction. This is amazing. I don't have to select a single leaf. They just do what I want in turn. Let's finish this painting. I want more color on the outside. Maybe dark reds and dark greens. Let's turn the outer leaves again. Some touch up in the middle. Done. We can also use our latest vacation picture to inspire a painting. As we store the stroke's properties in separate spatial data structures and interaction buffers, we can just load an image into it. If we now paint new strokes, they look up this information in the interaction buffers and therefore take the desired color. The same happens with other properties as well, as shown here with stroke size and orientation. The strokes look up their orientation in a buffer that stores appropriate vectors. Tools selected from the palette render these values into buffers, removing the need to directly select any primitive to change its properties. In this example, the painter was not happy with how the long strokes betrayed the upper part of the image and decided to delete these. Instead, he used pointless paint blobs to cover the upper part. In summary, we have shown how to combine techniques from pixel and vector painting into an interactive, non-photorealistic canvas that allows us to model with rendering primitives and to interactively create and change thousands of primitives.